very much. I'm, I'm a terribly friend to the crook. That's why I went to the Christmas night. And my, my name's Miss Wood. Kate is going to very kindly is going to ask questions from Jordan. So the evening will be partly a conversation, questions between the two of them. And at the end, you'll be welcome to ask some questions as well. So it'll be opened up to the floor at some stage. So thank you for coming and have a round of applause for our <laughs> plenty of time for questions and if you can't hear please say because it's going to be a bit weird trying to have a conversation this way and enabling you to hear as well so just say if you can't hear right I'm going to give a quick biography of Jordan real whistle stop tour and then some prepared questions and then it'll be over to you so age 14 and a student at Seaford Head School Jordan adopted her new name and developed her own fantastic and unique style of dress, hair, makeup and attitude. In 1974, aged 18, Jordan started work as a sales assistant at Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren's Kings Road fetish and glamour wear shop. <laughs> uh, uh, sex. Sorry, I forgot to say what it was called. <laughs> that wasn't just randomly shouting out sex. <laughs> wasn't in the script. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jordan was a walking advertisement for the shop, later renamed Seditionaries. She was a muse and model for Westwood's creations. Jordan was, and still is, an icon of the punk subculture. She was closely associated with the Sex Pistols. She performed Anarchy in the UK with them on telly in 1976. Jordan's willingness to be stripped on stage by Johnny Rotten <laughs> at a Sex Pistols show the same year contributed to their notoriety and success. Jordan's acting credits include Derek Jarman's cult films Sebastian and Jubilee and later The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Jordan was recruited by Adamant to manage his band she was Adam's inspiration for the song, I Sent a Letter to Jordan. And if you Google, I Sent a Letter to Jordan, you come up with some weird sort of middle-aged postage rules. Uh, sorry, middle, <laughs> middle East postal rules. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> old. I can Why see it. Say middle -aged? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So with Adam and the Ants, Jordan sang Lou for um, appeal session. In 1984, Jordan moved back to Seaford. She has a great love of cats and has worked in veterinary nursing for 20 years. Right, so how did your transformation into Jordan go down at Seaford Head School? Very interesting. <laughs> um, I from a very early age, one, I had a, a very clear idea about how I wanted to look and how I felt about myself. Um, and I, f I didn't feel um, at all inhibited um, by the, the clothes and the, the uniforms of the time. And I did get into quite a lot of trouble at school, um, mainly because I think it was a fear of people copying me, which was not true at all. Yeah. Nobody would want to copy me, looking the way I oh, did. Sure. They would yeah. Yeah. Sure. probably yeah. laugh at me, actually, at those times. But uh, um, I, later on in my school uh, career, um, people felt that I was going to go places um, yeah. and thought I was going to be uh, something that was after I was sort of just about to leave at the time. Yeah. It was very, very dodgy and sticky. You tell a story about having a home visit. Mm. Um, I don't know if that would have been an education welfare officer or was it just teaching mm. staff? No, I, I, um, I was a real big fan of Roxy Music. I expect mm. all of you know about Roxy Music. And a guy called Keith from Smile created these wonderful colours for the band. And I decided I'd go all the way up to London and have my hair done the same. I was about, as you say, 14. 
and I decided that I was going to have some nice pink and red big swathes of colour in it. And the English teacher, I believe, who was uh, Miss Colin at the time, yeah. decided that I was totally out of order and told me to go home. Mm. And I went home and it became obvious that they didn't want me to come back as I was. Mm. And I wasn't willing to go back after changing myself. They wanted me to re-dye my hair and, and I just sort of stuck to my guns really and they had to come to home and talk to my parents and in the end I had to wear, the compromise was, I had to wear a headscarf. <laughs> <laughs> Not in class because obviously all of my uh, classmates knew what I looked like but in between classes, I had to put this headscarf on. But equally, you've mentioned to me that the head teacher at the time, Keith Carlisle, who I remember uh, as being very strict and uh, you yeah. know really setting a standard, yeah. you told me what he wrote in your school report. Yeah. I mean, firstly, about the headscarf, I would go, I went, as soon as the bell went, I'd rush out to the front gate and stand there so that the whole school saw me. It was my way of protesting, basically. But um, yes, uh, I had to go and have a talk with Mr. Carlyle, and he explained that it wasn't really acceptable how I looked and that people would copy me. And again, I said, well, they won't be copying me. They'll just be laughing. And he said, fair enough. And that year, I got a really wonderful report from him saying that this girl will go far. Which is lovely. Yeah, so really he obviously good, yeah. knew, he appreciated the fact. Mm. He had an official stance and a, an unofficial yeah. stance, I think, on it. Um, going back to your style, you've described your style as using your face and body as a work of art. And you mentioned your influences as the Dutch artist Mondrian mm. and also um, the Lenny Riefenstahl book. The, right, the photographs yeah. of people of the cow, yeah. the um, Nubian tribe who did face painting. So how did you tap into these influences? Where did you find them? Uh, Mondrian, um, I had l a lot of art books. I mean, I, I did see, a, I read a lot of art books and actually a friend of mine showed me the book on the cow, people of the cow, and uh, oh, it was amazing. I mean, if you look through that book, you cannot believe these really macho, tribal yeah. men can adorn themselves in this most amazing way. Um, and I was just blown away by it. It was just somebody showing me the book, really, and I thought, wow, I have to do something like that. So it's a mixture of the two, really. And where did you get your makeup? Ah, yeah, I used to use <coughs> the, the strongest blusher that you could possibly find to, to make these geometric shapes in my face, uh, really, really bright blusher, basically. For anybody who hasn't Googled uh, Jordan yet, do, because there's the most beautiful pictures. You know, they really are stunning. I used uh, to try and sleep like this. <laughs> <laughs> it took me hours and hours to do it. My hair as well with all the l -nets. Thank God for l -nets. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sort of just try and stay still all night and, w and hopefully wake up looking okay in the morning. So how many Just days did you manage bit. to keep it going for? Oh, um, several days. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. It used to be a bit lopsided <laughs> sometimes, so I'd have to sort of <laughs> tweak it. Um, Seaford is pretty mainstream, uh, and possibly less so now than it, it was in the past. And I remember you, um, I was in the first year at Seaford Head when you were in the sixth form, I think. And I remember you as this otherworldly figure, you know, <laughs> looking, oh, you did, you looked amazing and really daring. We were actually scared. <laughs> I've got um, two friends here who were in the same year as me. Mm. And one of them, I won't say which, um, was in love with you. Um, <laughs> 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 That's but actually, oh, my God, she's aimed up to it. Um, but we, we were all scared of all the sixth form girls. So it didn't matter if you dressed up a bit, you know, no. they were all terrifying. Um, so I was curious about the reaction you got around the town and on the train, you know, when you started commuting to London. Well, it's, it's a bit like going back to Mr. Carlyle, the, the headmaster. I mean, people weren't trying to copy me. They weren't shocked, I guess, yeah. is the best, better yeah. word for it. Um, 
And it's almost like history has been rewritten because I came back to Sifu and a lot of people have become clients at the vets where I work and they remember me from those days. And they say things like, oh yeah, I was always a great fan of yours and you look great. And I, it's rewriting history because it was Perfectly very much right. pointing the finger and <laughs> not many people got it. They didn't really didn't understand where I was coming from. It was very new. Very, very, very different. Yes. You know, fantastically so. Um, now, I was curious about the train because um, earlier on this evening you saw your art teacher yeah, from Mrs. Scott. Head, Mrs. Scott. It's lovely to have her here. <laughs> I give you an applause. <laughs> you, Mrs. Scott, for putting up with us lot for a start. <laughs> yeah, well done. Uh, but Mrs. Scott tells a lovely story of you in all your regalia, you know, looking amazing on Lewis Railway Station. And Mrs. Scott was travelling up to London with her late husband. And you approached her as a 18-year-old, 19-year-old. That would have been well, about yeah. right. 18. Yeah, 18, 19. So yeah. you approached her saying, can I come and sit with you? There's a man and he's looking funny at me. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't just looking funny, some of them. <laughs> so you spent the rest of the train journey with Mrs. Scott and her husband having a nice yeah. chat. But you got some really difficult reactions on the train, you know, outright hostility and parents mm -hmm. being anxious for their children. Mm -hmm. um, I know, quite amazing. So yeah. what do you remember of that, that time? I had somebody wanting to throw me out of the door once. Um, big confrontation that I was... Um, uh, I wasn't fit to be sitting near their children, and to which I said quite politely, well, no, I was here first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't have to sit in front of me if you think I'm upsetting you. And so weird to be judging on appearance. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Remarkable. Did the train staff look after you at all? They did. I, used, I was given, it's a true story, it's become a bit of a myth actually, but it is actually true. They did give me a first class uh, pass <laughs> to get me away from the major <laughs> bulk of the people. Yeah. And that's when first class meant something, you know, you just didn't wander in there and sit down. <laughs> so I, I was allowed to sit there, yeah. And um, how did you come to work in sex? Uh, it's a funny thing. I, um, <clears throat> I saw a tiny little... It's, it's amazing how these things happen sometimes that you have these moments that are so clear in your mind and I saw a tiny weeny little clip of this shop which was yeah. called um, Let It Rock. Yeah. I didn't realise you yeah. were associated with it before it changed now. Just absolutely just on the cusp of that and I really wanted to work there and um, I went all the way up to, to New Kings Road and as was Vivian's want it just got closed at Nunnock <laughs> for probably no reason really <laughs> so um, I came back home to see and I thought well I want to get to London somehow so I'll um, <coughs> perhaps work at Harrods or something so I went to Harrods I got an interview at Harrods and my mum said to me no way look at you no <laughs> way you'll get a job there not in a million years and true, I did have sort of pale green makeup at that time, <laughs> <laughs> sort of mint green. And it was a there was a boutique called Let It Rock, mm -hmm. which was uh, sorry, um, uh, Way In, which was right up the top. It was uh, like the third, excuse me. Um, it was on the third floor at Harrods, and it was, you know, quite way out. It was called <laughs> Way In, but it was supposed to be way out. That's clever, actually. I know, and. Uh, I did a, a little interview there, got the job. My mum nearly had a heart attack <laughs> when I came home and said I got the job. And I worked there as a sort of stopgap so that I could be based in London and go back to Vivian's shop yeah. and, and try and get a job there.